Nancy Pelosi. Secretary Solis, Governor Ritter. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll accept your compliment on behalf of the great Democratic majority in the House of Representatives, which you helped elect. Thank you very much. But we're not here to talk politics. We're here to talk policy, and I'm very honored to be here with you, Terry. O'Sullivan, you can introduce me anytime. <laughs> I was thinking I might as well just go back to the office now after that introduction. We're so proud of Terry in San Francisco. We're so proud of Terry and the laborers in our country. Thank you for your tremendous leadership, Terry O'Sullivan. Thank you to the laborers. And uh, David Foster, what an inspiration he is to us. I'm so pleased that Leo and uh, uh, and Terry acknowledged his tremendous leadership. Last uh, big meeting we were together was in Copenhagen, as has been acknowledged, and there we pledged to uphold the truth that protecting the environment protects us all. It's a national security issue to reduce our dependence on foreign oil. It's an economic issue to be first with innovation for good green good jobs, green jobs for the future. It's a health issue for our children to reduce the um, emissions in the air and make the, their environment healthier. And it's a moral responsibility to protect God's planet. That's why the evangelicals help us. They believe, as do I, that this planet is God's creation. We have a moral responsibility uh, to protect it. In any event, we have a moral responsibility to future generations to pass it on in a very sustained way. And that's why I'm so pleased to be here with Carl Pope and Michael Brune. Where's Michael? Michael down here? Someplace. Of the Sierra Club, thank you for your tremendous leadership, both of you, as part of this uh, Green Jobs, Good Jobs, Green Jobs Alliance that is present here today. Leo Girard, what can be said of him? Relentless would be a mild, mild word, right? Relentless, and a leader. He stuck with us and was courageous when we were passing that bill last year that David just talked about, and uh, we could not have been successful without him. Thank you, Leo Gerard, for your leadership. And, and where did, and my friend Larry Cohen. Larry Cohen is a visionary. He's a visionary. It's wonderful to work with him because he is in the technologies of the future and the relationship to what we are trying to do with good dream jobs, green jobs, is directly related uh, to communicating that message in a sustainable way. And he has been in the forefront in a union, the CWO, which has been visionary and in the forefront. He sits comfortably in that, uh, in that leadership role. And Harriet, thank you for bringing us all together here uh, today. I just want to take a few minutes to share a few thoughts with you. Terry talked about passing the health care bill. Well, it was momentous, it was historic. I talked to the president after we passed the bill, but the next morning when I spoke to him, he said, you know, when the bill passed last night, the health care bill, I was happier than I was the night I was elected president of the United States. Wow. I said, well, I was pretty happy last night too, Mr. President, but I wasn't happier than I was the night you were elected president because if you weren't elected president, we wouldn't be having this victory right now. He was steadfast in his support for all of this. But it was all part, it was a, a struggle because we were up against those who refused to rein in the insurance companies. That was the big difference. We could all talk about agreeing on a, 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 ending uh, prohibitions on insurance for those with pre-existing conditions. But you can talk about it, but it doesn't work unless you do something about reining in the insurance companies. So it wasn't about disagreeing on the rhetoric. It was about disagreeing on reining in the insurance companies. And that's something we have with all of the pillars of the president's, uh, president's 
uh, budget of last year. Just so you know how what we are doing today fits in to a grander plan, and you all know that because you're involved in all of it. When the president was inaugurated, he said we will harness the sun, the soil, and we will uh, to fuel our cars and run our factories. A week and a day later, we passed a recovery bill that did just that. It did many more things, but it invested in green energy, clean energy jobs for the future. 100 days after the inauguration, we passed the president's budget. The House and the Senate on the same day. That's historic just in itself, in the same day. And in that bill, the president had a blueprint for economic stabilization to go into the future. It was about lowering taxes for the middle class, reducing the deficit, creating jobs around three pillars, investment in health care, first among equals, that is a job creator. It was about investments in innovation and education, and it was about investments in clean energy and addressing the climate change issue. Well, when we passed the health bill, we also passed most of the education bill, so we're two steps down the road. And now we must follow up with the action taken by the House last June to pass Waxman-Markey. That was a historic legislation heralded in Copenhagen. You will agree, my friends, that we were in Copenhagen Every legis everyone was coming to see Waxman and Markey. They were the rock stars of it all because they had passed that legislation. The Senate is very close with your advocacy. I think we can pretty soon put legislation on the president's desk, and that will be very important to our national security, to our children's health, to our innovation and our competitiveness as being number one and to our moral responsibility in regard to the planet. So I'm very pleased that you're honoring Mr. Waxman and Mr. Markey getting the award. I was proud to get it last year, and I thank you for that. <laughs> I know you'll be hearing from Congressman George Miller here today. Yes, the Employer Free Choice Act, he's the leader on that, but also on health care and energy. Let's hear for EPCA. <laughs> Uh, the history of Americans, America's progress has always been built on the ingenuity of the American people. And that's why this conference theme, investment, innovation, action, is so important. To see here such a cross-section of people from labor, from the environment, from business. This is good for business. Green is gold. And if we can't, in our initiatives, attract the private sector, we will not be successful. So we all have to work together. That's what we did with Mac Waxman Markey. That's what's happening in the United States Senate with Senator Kerry, Senator Bob, Chair, Chairman Kerry, Chairwoman Boxer, and um, I'm very proud uh, of Lindsey Graham. I probably shouldn't say that because that might get him in some trouble, but anyway, <laughs> we're very proud of, of his courage. In, in any case, um, the, um, understand how important, know your power in all of this, because nothing grand of this scale happens without your advocacy on Capitol Hill. Uh, you have been leaders in shaping policy. You have been leaders in uh, working with your constituent groups. And, and the, again, nothing is more uh, eloquent to a member of Congress than the voice of his or her own constituents. So as you come here representing uh, people from all over our country, you are making the difference. We are grateful to you that, for that. And we are grateful to it, when it, whether it was about health insurance and education and taking the money from the banks and giving it to families and lowering their cost of, of interest and the rest. And we're grateful to you on another subject that Terry brought up, reigning in Wall Street. We will pass legislation that has an impact on everything that we are doing. Again, the president's three pillars, education and innovation, climate change and energy, and health care. That's all great. Lower taxes, reduce the deficit and the rest. But everything is about creating jobs. And never again can we have a situation where recklessness on Wall Street creates joblessness on Main Street. We cannot let that happen. It is, um, 
It, it is, our legislation, without painting everyone with the same brush or being rash in terms